face tomorrow because you live all fear is gone because i know oh he holds my future my life is what i'm living just because he lives Thank you, Jesus. Because you live, we can face tomorrow. <laughs> yes, Lord. Our fears are gone. Because I know He holds my future. My life is what? I live in just. Because He lives. Let's do it together. Because he lives, oh, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, oh, he holds my future. My life is what I live in just. Because he lives, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all my fears are gone. Because I know, I know, he holds my future. My life is what I'm living just because you live. My life is what I'm living just because he lives. Oh, my life is what I'm living just because he lives. Oh, my life is what I'm living just because. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm just going to invite the person who has to do the Osh briefing to come at this time. I don't know if it's Mr. Gabriel. All right, so I will fill in. <laughs> in the case, in the event of an emergency, we I ask that you observe the person who sits on your left or right. They will be your body. When you are asked to evacuate, we ask you to evacuate in an orderly manner and assemble in car park number two, which is the car park where most of you would have um, parked your vehicles. Washroom facilities are available in the church, as well as through the annex here. You descend the staircase where you see the exit sign. You will then see another building just behind the rectory, and the washroom facilities are located there. All right, so there are two places in which you can use the washroom facility if that needs to happen. All right, there will be water available for persons who may need water during the course of the service. So we are going to sh start very shortly. We would have been blessed by our, our dear deacon. I have to say deacon tonight, yes, and not get myself in trouble. All right, and we shall continue with some songs of praise and worship at this time.
a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty, mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty, mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. I am delivered, praise the Lord. I am delivered, glory to His name. I was lost in sin in the valley of death. I am delivered, praise the Lord. I am delivered. Victory. Hallelujah. Everybody, we have the victory. 
Alleluia. We have the victory. Alleluia. We have the victory. Alleluia. Because every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. Satan defeated. Alleluia. Satan defeated. Alleluia. Everybody, Satan defeated. Alleluia. Everybody, Satan defeated. Alleluia. Because every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord. Move, Satan, move, let me pass. Move, Satan, move, let me pass. I am on my way, saved and sanctified. Move, Satan, move, let me pass. Tell him, tell him. Move, Satan, move, let me pass. Come go to Zion with me. Children, come go to Zion with me. Zion bells are ringing. Happy children are singing. Children, come go to Zion with me. Because who we have the victory. Hallelujah. Tell them we have the victory. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor we have the victory. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor we have the victory. Hallelujah. Because every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Fire, 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 fall on me. Fire, 
fire, fire, fire fall on me on the day, on the day of Pentecost. Fire fall on me on the day of Pentecost. Fire fall on me. We don't need no, we don't need no water. We don't need no water. Fire fall on me on the day of Pentecost. Fire fall on me. Day of Pentecost, fire fall on me. If you see me jumping, fire fall on me. If you see me dancing, fire fall on me. Oh, yes. On the day of Pentecost, fire fall on me. On the day of Pentecost, fire fall on me. I still find these people looking like the cool. I thought this fire song will I set them ablaze. People still sitting down. What do you think we should do? Back up all the chairs. I feel we need to go and get rid of the chairs. What do you think? Yes, God's not dead. He is still alive. Let's stand up and sing. God's not dead. Stand and sing. He is still alive. I can feel him in my heart. I can feel him in my soul. I can feel him all over me. Oh, no, 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 no. God's not dead. He is alive. God's not dead. He is alive. God's not dead. He is alive. I can feel him all over me. Oh, yes. I can feel him in the church. I can feel him in the streets. I can feel him in my heart. I can feel him all over me. God's not dead. He is alive. God's not dead. Oh, yes. He is alive. God's not dead. He is alive. I can feel him all over me. I never get weary yet. Oh, no. I never get weary yet. Oh, no, no. I never, I never get weary praising the Lord. I never get weary yet. I never get weary yet. Oh, no. I never get weary yet. Oh, no. I never get weary praising the Lord. I never get weary yet. I feel like singing now. Oh, yes. I feel like singing now. Oh, no. I feel like singing praising the Lord. I feel like singing now. I feel like singing now. Oh, yes. I feel like singing now. Oh, yes. I feel like singing praising the Lord. I feel like singing now. Cause I never get weary yet. Oh, never, never, never. I never get weary yet. Oh, never, never. I never get weary praising the Lord. I never get weary yet. I feel like I never get weary yet. Oh, no. I never get weary yet. I never get weary praising the Lord. I never get weary yet. I feel like dancing now. Oh, yes. I feel like dancing now. Dance for Jesus. I feel like dancing, praising the Lord. I feel like dancing now. I feel like dancing now. Dance, 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 dance. I feel like dancing now. Dance, 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 dance. I feel like dancing, praising the Lord. I feel like dancing now. Cause we never get weary yet. Oh, never. We never get weary yet. Oh, never. Weary praising the Lord, I never get weary yet. In whose side are you leaning on? I'm leaning on the Lord's side. Whose side are you leaning on? I'm leaning on the Lord's side. I lean, I lean, I lean, I lean. Leaning on the Lord's side. I lean, I lean, I lean, I lean. Leaning on the Whose side are you praising on? I'm praising on the Lord's side. Whose side are you praising on? I'm praising on the Lord's side. I praise, I praise, I praise, I praise. Praising on the Lord's side. Oh yes, I praise, I praise, I praise, I praise. Whose side are you trusting on? I'm trusting on the Lord's side. Whose side are you 
trusting on. I'm trusting on the Lord side. I trust, I trust, I trust, I trust. Trusting on the Lord side. I trust, I trust, I trust, I trust. I'm trusting on the Lord side. Whose side are you dancing on? I'm dancing on the Lord side. Whose side are you dancing on? Dancing on the Lord side. I dance, I dance, I dance, I dance. Dancing on the Lord side. I dance, I dance, I dance, I dance. Dancing on the Lord's side. Whose side are you leaning on? I'm leaning on the Lord's side. Whose side are you leaning on? I'm leaning on the Lord's side. I lean, I lean, I lean, I lean. Leaning on the Lord's side. I lean, I lean, I lean, I lean. Leaning on the Lord's side. With my heart. I have a sword in my hand, help me to use it well. I'm gonna win to watch and pray, never to come back till that great judgment day. I have a sword in my hand, help me to use it well. Till that great judgment day, I have a sword in my hand. Help me to use it well. I have a sword in my hand. Help me to use it well. I'm going away to watch and pray. Nothing but the blood of 
Jesus. Lift Jesus higher, 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 lift her higher. is a holy train. This train, this train is a holy train. This train, this train is a holy train. Everybody got to put Jesus' name. This train, this train, this train is a bound for glory. This train, this train is a bound for glory. This train. This train is a bomb for glory. Ain't carrying nothing but a meek and holy. This train, this train, this train is a holy train. This train. I'm not hearing you. This train is a holy train. This train. Oh yeah. This train is a holy train. Everybody ride on Jesus' name. This train. Goodbye world, I stay no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin, I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Goodbye world, Goodbye world. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back. Because I want to see my Jesus someday. Goodbye world, goodbye world. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye pressures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Goodbye world, goodbye world. No longer with you, goodbye pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Born, born again. Born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born again. Born, born, born again. Born, born, born again. Water, the spirit, and the blood. Thank God, I'm born again. Hallelujah. Born of the water, the spirit, and the blood. Thank God, I'm born again. What's born of water, the spirit, and the blood. Thank God, I'm born again. Hallelujah. Born of the water, the spirit, and the blood. Thank God, I'm born again. I got my mind made up, and I won't turn back. Because I want to see my Jesus someday. I got my mind made up, and I won't turn back. Because I 
I want to see my Jesus someday. Jesus' name, Jesus' name, so sweet. Emmanuel, name, so sweet. Jesus' name, so sweet. Emmanuel, name, so sweet. Every time I walk and talk about Jesus, Jesus' name, so sweet. Every time I walk and talk about Jesus, Jesus' name, so sweet. Jesus' name, so sweet. Emmanuel, name, so sweet. Jesus' name so sweet, Emmanuel' name so sweet. Every time I walk and talk about Jesus, Jesus' name so sweet. Every time I walk and talk about Jesus, Jesus' name so sweet. I am under the rock, the rock is higher than I. Rock Jesus, Jehovah, hide me. I am under the rock. Go and tell my enemies, I am under the rock. Rock is higher than I. Rock Jesus. Jehovah, hide me. I am under the rock. Go and tell my enemies. Go and tell my enemies. I am under the rock. Jehovah, hide me. I am under the rock. I am under the blood. I am under the rock. The rock is higher than I. Oh, yes. Jehovah, hide me. I am under your blood. Go and tell my enemies. I am under the rod. Jehovah hide me. I am under the rod. My God is a good God. Yes, He is. My God is a good God. Yes, He is. I can hear you. My God is a good God. Yes, He is. Hallelujah. My God is a good God. Yes, He is. Cause He lifts me up. My feet on, on solid ground. What he does? He lifts me up. What he does? And turns me around. Oh yes, and, and he plants my feet on the solid ground. He's a good, 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 good God. Yes, he is. Oh yes, he's a good, 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 good God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. A good, 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 good God. Yes, He is. And God is a good, 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 good God. Yes, He is. Cause He lifts me up and He turns me around and He plants my feet on solid ground. He lifts me up and He turns me around. He plants my feet on solid ground. That's why. We have the victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We have the victory. Hallelujah. We have the victory. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have the victory. Hallelujah. Because every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. He is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. He is Lord. Every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord. Sit undefeated, sit undefeated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sit undefeated. Oh, hallelujah. Tell them, sit undefeated. Hallelujah. Sit undefeated. Hallelujah. Cause every knee shall bow and every song confess that Jesus is Lord. My Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. Touch my finger with a golden pen, a golden pen, a golden pen. Touch my finger with a golden pen, sign my name up there. Touch my finger with a golden pen, a golden pen, a golden pen. Touch my finger with a golden pen, sign my name up there. Sign my name, sign my name up there. Sign my name, sign my name up there. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Call out to him. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Jesus. We had some rain today. Amen. But if you look up to the clouds now, mm. he moved them. Amen? Amen. Amen. Some people get scared. The same. I ain't coming out tonight. That rain was real serious. Eh? We go view online. But it is better to be here, right? You're feeling the energy? Now, nah, hearing some people, man. Let me see. North Stand, you're feeling the energy? This is the North Stand here, yeah, no? Are you feeling the energy? South Stand, you're feeling the energy? Now, nah, North Stand, this side looks bigger than that side, you know? North Stand, are you feeling the energy? Southside, are you feeling the energy? Yes! Nah, man. Let me go by the clergy. Clergy, are you feeling the energy? <laughs> clergy, are you feeling the energy? <laughs> but it's going lower, boy. All right. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open, open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see. I want to see you, Lord. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. You highly lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, 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 holy. holy. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. Lord. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart. Lord. Open the Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you highly lifted up, shining in the power of glory, for love your power and love. As we sing, holy, 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 I want to see you, I want to see you. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, Amen. I'm trading my sorrow. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. I am trading my suffering. Tell him. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes. I'm trading my Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, 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 yes, Lord
Yes, Lord, Amen. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shames. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. So there's a simple action to go with this. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, Amen. One more time. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, Amen. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sins, Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord. We sing in yes. Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, Amen. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. We thank God that we can trade all these things to him yes. because of his death, amen. his resurrection, amen. and his ascension to amen. sit at the right hand of the Father yes, Lord. in all his majesty, amen. in all the splendor enthroned above. Yes. To make intercessions for you and for I. Amen. For those who are here and those who are not here. Yes. His majesty is to be worshipped. Amen. To be glorified. To be honored. So let us, as we get ready for the service aspect, bring ourselves in a frame of mind to listen to him. As we say, Majesty. Worship His Majesty, for to Jesus be glory, honor, and praise. Oh, Majesty, Majesty, Kingdom authority, Kingdom authority, flows from His throne, flows from. Unto his own is that embrace. So exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Jesus. 
cross to die, now glorify, King of all kings, O Majesty, 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 worship His Majesty, worship His Majesty, unto Jesus, His glory, honor. Kingdom authority Goes from his throne Unto his own His heart and grace So exalt Lift up on high The name of Jesus Jesus is God, now glorified, King of all kings. Jesus who died, Jesus who died, now glorified, King of We glorify his name. Amen. He is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and end of all things. Amen. And we thank God that he is the I am that I am. And there is none to be compared to him. Amen. Amen. We will now have the opening prayer. So I invite you to stand. Let us have this time and this space dedicated to our God as we have come together to join our hearts in song and praise. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am Be still and know Be still Be Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many gifts that we receive from you and we name them in our hearts we thank you for the gift of your salvation. As you have sent your son to be with us, to live with us, to teach us, and to remind us of who we are made in your image, and that you call us into your presence. We stand here this evening, Lord, thankful for the work of your church. We ask you, Lord, to bless this gathering this evening. Bless all those who are here, those who are joining us online, those who will join us in the future. Be touched by what you will share with us through your messengers this evening. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to show us the way as you lead us into your presence, 
as you remind us of the plan that you have in store for us, each and every one of us, and as members of your church. Help us, Lord, as we stray so easily from your path. Help us, Lord, to remember the purpose for which you have called us. And as we conduct this service this evening, a mission, use us to touch the hearts of those who will come after us. We ask your special blessing on our young people as we do our part in journeying with them for their preparation of continuing the tasks that you have given to us as we walk in your light. Bless us richly, Lord. And we ask these blessings in the name of our dear Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll, I'll take too long to walk here to tell her he's still standing, but um, we'll sing, Oh, let the power fall on me, my Lord, as we begin in song, the service aspect, or shall I say, continuing the service of praise to God. reading followed by the psalm appointed and then we'll have a song thereafter. The reading 
is taken from the reading is taken from Genesis chapter 22 verses 9 to 12 when they came to the place that God had shown him Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order he bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son but the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. The word of the Lord. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul. He guides me along right paths for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Shall we stand now and sing, Wake Up My People. Wake up to the needs of all the ones who suffer sorrow. 
wake up from it now to do your best to change tomorrow. Wake up, my people, and open every door. Wake up this time now, love my people evermore. Even in our families, people Even are waiting. In our families, people are waiting. Someone might be crying, hopefully, crying. Hopefully. Wake up to my people, dry their tears and sorrow. As often as you do the same, you do the same for me. Wake up, my people, dry their tears and sorrow. As often as you do the same, you do the same for me. Wake up, my people, wake up, give me joy. Hallelujah. Wake up, my people, know what lies about and wake up from the days of old to ones who suffer sorrow. Wake up, promise now to do your best to change tomorrow. Wake up, my people, and open every door. Wake up this time now, love my people evermore. We sit for the next reading. Reading from the Word of God taken in the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 10, beginning at verse 13. People were bringing children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. So once again, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our teacher-preacher this evening. I had the fortunate pleasure of meeting her over, let's say about over 10 years ago, and had the opportunity of working closely with her as a member of the Anakin Board of Education, as a member of the a committee that we work together, and then sharing on Sundays at, at Spanish Mass. It gives me great joy to welcome, not totally welcome her to this side of the woods, because she here, she's here regularly in Spanish Mass. Oh, you coordinator who is going to speak to us on the team Jesus said let the little children come after understanding as young people whether you're young in Christ or young in the physical sense of things yesterday we talked about who I am as church now, we have to let the little children come. Deacon Ike would have told us to start Sunday school in each congregation. Now is an opportunity for us to welcome the little ones. Little ones, whether it be children or little ones in the faith of Christ, be that source to welcome them into the kingdom of God, into our church, remembering that the church is for them now, not in the future. So as we invite our sister to come forward, we sing anointing, fall on me, fall on her, and then fall on us. Anointing 
Shake 
help us. Anoint us. Open our hearts to receive you, O Lord. Open our minds to perceive you, O Lord. Open our ears to hear you, O Lord. Good night, everyone. Please be seated. It is my pleasure to be here this evening to share these words with you. I want to thank the Missions Committee for inviting me to do this. And I want to thank God for giving me the words to do this as I was called to do this. I acknowledge all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I acknowledge all members of clergy. I acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit here this evening. I want to share with you this evening um, the theme for this evening for my messages. Jesus says, let the children come to me. And when I thought of that, I thought of an experience I had. I thought of an experience I had a few months ago last year, maybe August, into September when I had to take my son to school to have an interview with his school's then acting vice principal. And um, he was about to enter lower six, and he was being interviewed. And the vice principal asked him why he wanted to do the subjects he had chosen. And I was the eager mother there, anxious, you know, you want your child to get into Form 6. And then I heard a still, small voice said, you be quiet, let the child speak. And when I heard my son articulate, and I will say articulate and not explain, because it was an articulation. When I heard my son articulate why he wanted to do the subjects he had chosen, <laughs> I was surprised. Because my son is a, is, a, is a, I will have to say a man, my son is a man of few words. Yes, no, okay, just now, the occasional stoops are coming, no long explanations. So to hear my son utter what might have been a six sentence paragraph, and go on and explain things that clearly showed he had been doing research and he knew what he was talking about. I was surprised. And I looked at him and said, that is my child? Because that is not the child I know. That is not the soft-spoken child. And if you, you know my family, he has two sisters and they are quite dynamic. Um, so I don't know that he often gets a word in edgeways. So to hear him speak, I was surprised. And I understood why God told me to be quiet, because I guess I could talk too, right? So not to just straight on my daughters, but me too, yeah? And in a similar way, God tells us to stand aside and let the children come to me. Let them come to me because I know the plans that I have made for them. Let them come to me because I knew them even before I formed them in their mother's womb. Let them come to me for this is the will of the Father that all will come to him. And I deliberately selected Psalm 23 as the psalm this evening. It's a psalm that's well known. We use it at funerals, either sung, chanted, or recited. We use it in dark moments when we're going through some dark valleys, persecution, 
troubles, difficulties. We use it as a psalm to remind us that we shall be vindicated and that our enemies do not have the last say. And we use it to comfort us and to know that with God there is no lack. It is indeed how the psalm begins. And then it is a psalm that reminds us of the promise that awaits all of us, those who believe. It's a psalm that also shows a transition, a transition in a relationship. Verses 1 to 3 of the psalm describe God as the good shepherd. A shepherd is one who guides. A shepherd is one who guides by leading. A shepherd walks in front of the sheep. A shepherd has a rod and staff and whatnot. The, the first three verses of the psalm also refer to God in the third person. He, the Lord. But then in verses 4 and 5 of the psalm, God is referred to as a host or steward. A host who sets a fine table before us in the presence of our enemies. And more importantly, the host who walks alongside us and is referred to in the second person. And the transition I see is one of the shepherd walking in front of the sheep to the host walking alongside the guest. And it is not strange that we should see the transition of the relationship that way. For Psalm 121 tells us that the Lord is, the sh is our shade at our right hand. So that notion of God being ever beside us is found elsewhere in Scripture. And for having transitioned from the one who walks diligently and steadfastly behind the good shepherd to the one who walks alongside a host, we can profess as verse 6 does boldly. Beloveds, our relationship with God must go through that transition. Walking behind to walking beside. There's that hymn, I come to the garden and he walks with me and he talks with me. And when you're walking with somebody, you don't walk in front or behind them, but you walk alongside the person. And it is expected that our relationship with God will take us from behind to beside. Again, that is that concept of walking beside and being a friend is supported not in scripture and in song. John 15:15 15, 15 tells us, in John 15:15, 15, 15, Jesus says to the disciples, "I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I call you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. Our relationship with God is intended to transition out of infancy into a place of friendship. In song, we celebrate what a friend we have in Jesus. Maybe if it were written by your French Creole and, um, ancestors, they would have said, what a compare, or a comer. Or if we talk to Father Latin, he might say, a comadre, or compadre. What a friend we have in Jesus. Someone you will tell, tout bagay to. And someone who will share with you. And when we nurture our children and let them come to Jesus, 
That is the kind of relationship we pray they will come to celebrate with the Lord. My dear ones, I used Psalm 23 deliberately to show the transition. A transition that did not threaten, but rather enhanced the relationship between God and the psalmist. I used Psalm 23 to serve as a bridge between the first reading and the second. I used Psalm 23 because there is a promise of God's goodness and mercy for each and every one of us as we graduate in our relationship. I used Psalm 23 because our children must grow to that place of declaring like the psalmist, surely your, your goodness, and this is why I love the Psalter version of the psalm. The version in the NRSV in the Bible does not say your goodness, it says surely goodness and mercy. But in the Psalter, it identifies whose goodness and whose mercy we're talking about. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our children should grow to that point of celebrating, of declaring, of pronouncing, and saying it confidently with gusto and fervor and conviction. But this can only happen, dear ones, if we let the children come to Jesus. And if they go, when we let them go. In the first reading, so I've explained why, how I see the psalm serving as a bridge. And now I want to describe what lies on one side of the bridge. And I'll take you to the other side. So in the first reading, there are two faithful people, wouldn't you see? There's Isaac. And there's Abraham. Isaac is a faithful son because his brother takes him up this mountain, tells him, well, we have to go and sacrifice a lamb. And he goes with his father. Scripture doesn't tell us whether there was any argument or dispute. We just know he went with his father. Now, in modern times, if we might have called our children and they say, well, we're going to sacrifice. And Isaac says it a few verses before the beginning of the extract of scripture that we use this evening. Well, I'm seeing, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing that, but I ain't seeing what we're going to sacrifice. I'm not seeing the lamb. But he went all the same. Almost naively, innocently, he continued with his father. And then... There's a faithful and obedient father whose example Isaac was following. Because Abraham had been told by God to take a son, go up the hill, the son whom you love, the same one you pray years for, the same one you, you complain to me that you didn't have, that same one, not the one you had before, the one you had to wait for, the one you had with your wife, I need you to take that one and burn him, to sacrifice him. And Abraham said, okay, Lord. He didn't question as he had questioned, well, God, like I will have to give, this, a, a, a servant will have to be my heir. This time he just went. Such was his obedience. Such was his growth in faith. Such was his journey with God. And he quietly surrendered his son. And Abraham went and maybe even presumed to know the full extent of the will of God and God's plan for him and Isaac. And how is that not like us? We bring our children to church. We do what we have to do to get them ready. And then we presume to know how and when and where God will use them. 
We do what we are told to do. But then, once we bring them to church, do we continue to listen as Abraham did? Because when Abraham got there, and he was very much ready, he tied up the child and everything. Scripture doesn't record any struggle between them. What really going on here, Daddy? You're, 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 like you're losing it or what? Scripture doesn't say anything like that. And so we are left to presume that Isaac, like his father, reverently submitted to the will of his father. And then when Isaac says, well, a little before, what, what really going on here? Abraham said, you don't study that. The Lord will provide. I mean, Abraham wasn't lying, but it's what he was thinking God would provide. But then as he goes to do it, God tells him, don't hurt the child. The angel says from heaven, untie the boy and don't hurt him. Now, when we do, when we bring our children into church, when we bring them to participate, we are not doing anything wrong, you know. We are doing as we, re we are required to do. We are teaching them in the way that they should go. But maybe, just maybe, we presume to know the full extent of God's will for our children. Presuming to know how God will use them. Where God will use them. Why God will use them. And when God will use them. I confess that I myself am guilty of all of the above. Presuming to know where God will use my children, when, how, and why. And I get ahead of myself. And well, it ends in old noise, but that's beside the point. That's not the key of the message today. But we presume to know the full will of God. But in order for that will of God to be revealed for our children, it requires some listening, some further listening. And it is why the diocesan theme, reimagining mission, is critical. Because to reimagine mission, it means we have to always be tuned in, always be listening, always be discerning. And then always obedient. Because we can hear, we can discern, we can perceive, but we might not obey. Reimagining mission, my dear fr friends, is turning things around. Turning things around and accepting the fact that somebody else will be involved. If I had to put it this way, if we don't reimagine mission, it is like having a phone that requires a C-type charger and insisting on using a micro USB charger for the phone. It just ain't gonna happen. Nothing will be powered, nothing will be revived, nothing will be re-energized, and eventually the phone dies because it's not being charged. Reimagining mission is like that. Now, I will say, admittedly, Abraham was confused because, I mean, who would think that a loving God, a providing God, a caring God, a God who had told Abraham that he would have a son born by his wife would then turn around and tell him to sacrifice that very child. So Abraham would have been confused, any of us would have been confused. God, is that you're really telling me to do? You're really telling me to tell them I don't want this job anymore? You're really telling me to tell them repossess the power property if they have to do it? You're really telling me to tell them, God, it's okay, choose somebody else? Is that what you're telling me to do? To give up this thing I so desperately wanted? So Abraham would have been confused. But Abraham did what God had told him to do without 
asking questions. Perhaps the difference between Abraham and us is that we don't do as God tells us to do with the children. We want our own will imposed on them. So instead of allowing the child to realize his or her God-given potential in the area of his choosing, we impose our own will on that child. And at age 40, 45, the child is miserable because this was never what they wanted to do. And maybe that's the difference between us and Abraham. Abraham was faithful and obedient to the very point of sacrificing his child for God's purpose. But sometimes we resist God's purpose. I want to ask us this now. Are we stopping as Abraham did as he went up that hill? Are we pausing to listen to how God will call us to use the young people in our midst? Are we really allowing that mission to be reimagined? Or are we only speaking it? Or are we allowing it to be reimagined, but when we hear what needs to be done, we balk at it? Are we taking the call to action seriously? Are we willing to change the paradigm? Are we willing to allow someone else to take the action? Or must we be the only ones taking the action? We are being called in this week to focus on the youth, and always, but we're pronouncing the emphasis on the youth. We are being called to focus on the youth, but maybe we are allowed to allow it to go only insofar as God's initial instruction to us was, which was just to bring them to church, and beyond that, it is our way or the highway. We are called to focus on the youth, but yet we are prepared to tie them up in all kinds of extraneous activities that take them further and further away from God. We are focusing on the youth, but yet we shut them down when they ask questions, when they challenge, when like Thomas, they say, I don't believe just yet, and I need evidence to believe. Well, how do you mean you ain't believe? It's God. You're supposed to believe. Or we ignore the questions. But my dear friends, faith that is owned is faith that is challenged and questioned and faith that is answered. How can I own something that I don't understand? How can I own something that I that I never identify with. Like Thomas, our children will question. Are we allowing them to question when we focus on the youth? But faith development requires transition, as we saw in the psalm. The reason that Abraham could get to the point of reverently submitting to God's instruction to sacrifice his son is that God had allowed him to question. When Abraham said to God, Oh Lord, will you allow a servant of my house to be my heir? God was allowing Abraham to challenge, to question, to ask why. So that eventually Abraham could grow to the point of walking alongside requires transition because that is the only way that there will be a change in the paradigm. Faith development requires transition because that is the only way that we will be able to reimagine mission. Faith development requires transition and a call to action. A different kind of action from maybe even 
a different group of people. Maybe even from our young people. Being called to respond positively to the call to take action, young people. To ask for it. And when you receive it, to use it. And to use it well and responsibly for the honor and glory of God. To ask for it. And to, you, and, and to receive it. To knock at the door and when the door is opened unto you, to enter and not allow your seat at the table to be taken. To speak up when given the opportunity. And not to allow someone else to decide what you have to say. And I say this. Use it responsibly. Not with hate, not with anger, but with love and in compassion. And as we see that faith develop, that faith transition to the point where we walk along, to the point where we get to say, you will defend me. Your rod and staff will comfort me. We transition to the second reading. To Mark 10, 13 to 16. And it is that point of transitioning that Jesus said, let the children come to me. Don't bring them. Don't prevent them. Let the children come to me. You step aside and allow the children to come forward to me so that I can speak with them, so that I can build a relationship with them, so that I can show you how you are to treat with them. Let the children come to me, that I will elevate their status as created sons and daughters of God, that I will treat them with love and not the least of all persons in a society, that I will show you who your children are. I will show you what your children are capable of. I will show you who your children can be if only you will let them come to me. In the King James Version of the verse in which Jesus says, let the children come to me, the word used is suffer. Suffer the little children to come unto me. Now it is adequately translated, let. It is no diminution of the, the, the intensity of, of, of the meaning. But perhaps it is no coincidence that whereas the older translation said suffer, the newer translation says let. Because in order to let, in order to permit something to happen, we have to suffer. Suffer a loss of self as adults with our children, as older persons in the faith, with younger persons in the faith. We have to sacrifice ourselves and our own notions of our, of our self-importance. And allow them to grow into who they are being called to be. And that requires humility. It also requires trust of God because they will make mistakes. But trust that God is always working God's purpose out. And therefore even the mistakes will God turn around and use to build up a mighty people for his honor and for his glory. Let the children come to me. Allow them to pass. Step aside. Move. Let the children come to me. I know them better than you. For I am God. And I form them in the womb. 
Let the children come to me. I am the one who will help them understand how the mission needs to be reimagined. To respond to the needs of a world that they will have to live in, not you. Let the children come to me. I will give them the keys that they need for what is next. Let the children come to me. Let the children come to me suspending all your expectations as to how it would turn out. Let the children come to me because the reimagined mission is my plan, not yours. And I am the one who will dictate how it goes, when it goes, why it goes. Let the children come to me. Let the children come to me so that I can build a relationship with them, that they can walk aside me like you have been walking alongside me. Let the children come to me. Bishop Claude recently has taken to referring to wanting an Anglican funeral. We pray him extended years, notwithstanding his, but sometimes it's, it's good to set a goal for oneself. The only way Bishop Claude can have an Anglican funeral is if we let the children come to Christ in the Anglican tradition and teach them the ways according to the Anglican faith and allow them to grow and merge their new being with the tradition that has been passed down to us. There is a reason we no longer read from, we no longer use the King James Version as the standard text. Because things change. Let the children come so that they too can blend their own experience of this beautiful world that God has created with the tradition that we have inherited. And when they have tested and when they have questioned and when they have challenged, then they can own that Anglican tradition so that Bishop Claude will indeed have what he is praying for, an Anglican funeral. Our children need a voice, beloveds. A voice that is theirs. Not the voice that we tell them they need to have. Let them express themselves. Allow them to be creative in this holy space. That they will grow to appreciate that this holy space receives me for who I am and what I am. So that indeed, like our brother Reverend I told us last night, I will embrace who I am and sing, I know who I am. Allow the children a voice. Allow that expression to take place, and we have it in our church. When I was a child, we sang hymns from the ancient and modern. We now sing hymns from the CPWI hymnal. And while there are those who will say, well, we aren't sure how much it really changed, that's fine. But the fact is, it points at the fact that we were seeking something that expressed us a little more. There are some verses in the hymns in the ancient and modern that were removed. And that shows a transition in our faith as we grow. Gone are the days where children should be seen and not heard. Yes, let the children be seen and be heard and not as entertainment. Let the children be heard, not to entertain you during mass, not to entertain you for free on a Saturday evening. Let the children be heard. Let them participate, not only on fourth Sundays. Let them participate Every week, behavior is learned. And if they are not there to participate and to express themselves, they will never learn that behavior. Children back then in, in the reading were called to Jesus. In fact, Jesus called them, come. And they went to him. And they sat on his lap, and they were comforted and embraced by him. 
let the children come to me. And I will show you how to treat with them. When they come in church, are they allowed to, after mass, hang out in the church, lime a bit? Or are they quickly scuttled away and told, hey, listen, 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 this is no place for that. Let the children come to me. The section heading for verses 13 to 16 reads, Jesus blesses the children. Letting the children come to Christ is about receiving their blessing, receiving their inheritance as children of God. And if they know who they are, they know that they deserve an inheritance, and they will not, like Adam, as Reverend Ike spoke last night, they will not, like Esau, give away their inheritance. They will value it. They will not, like Esau, give away their birthright. Children, learn who you are so that you will not give away your birthright. Come to Christ. Receive your blessing. That blessing is the very thing that allowed the psalmist at the end of Psalm 23 to say boldly, Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. One version says, my whole life long, I prefer forever. Because my life is finite, unless I talk about my life beyond here. But forever makes it clear that that time frame is not defined by my life, but by the duration of the ever-living and eternal God. And oh, how I would love for all of us, our children, to be able to say that. And especially our children growing up in a world that is fraught with issues that seem to be growing by the day. Beheadings, murders, confusion in school, fight threats of bombings in schools, confusion around career, studying and then not being able to find a job or having to choose a job that grossly underpays you for the amount you invested in your study. Conflict, a confusion about what is truth Right is wrong and wrong is right. Oh, how it would be great for our children to be able to say, surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I don't know how many of us observed that what Jesus experienced in the text was indignation. Now, I like to define words. Because the King James Version says he was displeased. Okay, I could be displeased about something. But indignation, in my mind, suggests a greater intensity of that displeasure. Because indignation is an annoyance or anger at what is perceived to be unfair. And indeed, it is unfair to prevent the children from coming to Christ. And let me just clarify. Letting the children come to Christ is not the simple act of just bringing them to church. Huh? But it is letting them come with you to church, letting them participate in events such as this, letting them join the youth group, letting them join associations in the group, letting them join the different committees in the church which need youth representatives. Letting them join and you not imposing your will, parents, guardians, adults, not imposing your will on them. 
And this is not to promote any new age parenting, eh? but it is simply to accept that our journey as parents, as guardians, as guides, as it grows, is more of a relationship of walking alongside than walking in front. Because just as our relationship with God graduates from walking behind to walking alongside, so too is our relationship with our children, even if they're 35 and still living under our roofs. It is more about walking alongside and providing that constant companionship to our children so that they will be able to stand on their own two feet as the need arises. And so, yes, it is unjust to prevent that from happening. I can bring my child to church with me every Sunday, and they have still not yet come to Christ. I can have my child sitting in these events every time there is one, every harvest festival, every concert, every prayer breakfast, every God alone knows what. And yet my child has not come to Christ because I am not allowing that child to grow outside of what I want to experience in my relationship with Christ. Let the children come to me is about me stepping aside so that they can step aside and walk along, step forward and walk alongside with their master. Jesus says, let the children come to me. And we needn't be concerned. We needn't be worried. We needn't be scared. We needn't be confused. Because if we say that the Lord is our shepherd and we shall not want, then he will provide for even the need that our children will have. Not only ours. And he will give me the grace. He will give us the grace to step forward and develop their own strength in the Lord. Let the children come to me. There is no need to be perturbed. There is no need to be upset, angry, annoyed because they have been being prepared. Didn't they prove it during COVID when we needed to stream our masses and other events? And were it not for the input of young people in our midst, we would not have been able either to do it or for some of us to view it because we just didn't understand the technology. Let us not be anxious about tomorrow. And what I want us to understand is how much the scripture verses that we prattle off impacts every dimension of our lives. Not being concerned about tomorrow means that God is working his purpose out in our children, in our young people, as misguided and misdirected as they seem. Because God's all-encompassing will allows even for that. Did God's all-encompassing will not allow for Adam's fall? And therefore, if God is saying, let the children come to me, it means God has taken care of all of that. All of the mistakes. How many of us have led perfect lives? I have made some huge errors in my life. And I'm not ashamed to say it. But yet, God catered for that. And he will cater for the errors of our children. And if we believe that the Lord is our light and our salvation, and if we believe that we, have this, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, then we believe that when our children come to Christ and we let go of them, that even their mistakes will he be able to cater for. 
let the children come to me because we are tired. How many of us say on a daily basis, oh God, I can't make no money, I'm tired. How many of us are consumed with meetings in church? And yes, we will say it's because the young people ain't coming forward. But if when they come forward, their voice is suppressed, then what are they coming forward for? How many of us indeed say, look, me ain't going to that now because when I go, me ain't going, I ain't going to this meeting because when I go, everything I say, they just have a problem with, so I stay in home. So if we could say it, the children are supposed to say it. And we say it in front of them. And if children practice what they see, then how is it we don't expect them to do the same? Let the children come to me because you are tired. We are tired. And it is time for us to pass on the baton. Let the children come to me because if you don't let them go, Christ cannot take hold of them the way Christ needs to. Let the children come to me because if we don't let go, then they can't hold on. Just think of a 400 uh, a, a relay, a 4 by 100 race. If each runner does not release the baton for the next runner to take hold of it, then there is no race. They will be disqualified. They will spend time fighting over who should take the baton. And note, I say relay because, as you will note, in a relay, you still have to hold the baton while the other runner takes hold of it so that nothing will be lost. And if anyone were to run a four, a four by 100 race as a 400 meter race on their own, they would be disqualified. In fact, I don't know if ever there has ever been such an incident, but I'm almost certain that runner would be disqualified. Let the children come to me. My dear ones, faith is a journey. Faith is a process. Faith is about daring to take a chance. And I don't want it to seem as if I'm picking on parents or leaders or anything like that. But we have to set the example so that when they get to our position, they can do likewise. And the next 10 bishops down the road will indeed be able to celebrate an Anglican funeral. The next 10 bishops down the road will be able to see a people of power and praise who have been built up. The next 10 bishops down the road will be able to see that indeed our people have responded to the call to wake up. The next 10 bishops down the road will be able to say indeed we serve a great and mighty God because we remember the days when. Let the children come to me so that the work that needs to be done can be done. Let them come free of our assumptions. Let them come free of our expectations. Just let them come into the arms of the Savior. What better place for them to be? I return to my opening image of my son who spoke in a way that I had never heard him speak. There is a surprise awaiting us. And so part of that letting the children come to us is about us also receiving a blessing. 
to know that our living was not in vain. That we helped these children as we passed this way. So that when our eyes are about to close, we can indeed say, my living has not been in vain. Let us allow them to be who they were called to be, the who they are being called to be, and young people respond to that call to be who you are being called to be. Let us, like Abraham, respond in obedience. Because if we are not obedient and don't give, don't demonstrate obedience to them, well then indeed we are not teaching the children in the way they are to go. Because God requires obedience and reverence, submission of all of us. And if we do not let the children come to Jesus, we are effectively teaching them to do the same. Let the children come to Christ and surprise us that they can indeed do the work, that they can lead that committee, that they can lead service, that they can lead the choir, that they can lead the dance ministry, that they can lead the ICT team. Let the children come to me. Make the decisions. Make the mistakes. Take the time. Get up and go again. Our Lord Jesus Christ fell three times as he carried his cross. Who are we not to expect them to fall when they carry their crosses as well? Let the children come to me. Words from our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. As I close, I leave you with this message, or extension of the message in song. How I have longed to draw you to my side. As when a hand covers a bruise, but you went darting like chicks in the storm. How could you know that my wing was warm? How could you know my love was you? Come to me, my little one, and you will be refreshed, and I will give you rest. You hear me walking on the wind of the wind see my warm breast in the setting sun night is but shadow of my wings widespread my pinions preparing a bridal bed when all your toil and tears Come to me, my little one, and you will be I hover at the tip of your heart as a mother awaiting a son. Should a mother forget the child of a womb? 
and a loved one and just the room I'll not forget my chosen one come to me my little one and you will be Let the children come to me, a call for their blessing, a call for their refreshing. Let the children come to me. Amen. Oh. 
You know who you are? Yes. yes. That was the question yesterday. <laughs> Child of God. People went and did the homework for you. Praise God. So, we got a lot to digest just now. And I pray that we will action that which was spoken to us. Amen? Amen. So, shall we stand and reaffirm our faith? In the words of our Apostles' Creed, as we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. At this time, I invite those who are appointed to intercede on our behalf. And I ask that we all agree in prayer as they pray for the different needs that have been identified. Almighty and everlasting God, by your grace, we have gathered in this diocese to a goodly fellowship of faith. Sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments. We pray for our bishop, the right reverend, Cor Berkeley, that you may give him a spirit of courage and right judgment, and a spirit of knowledge and love. Send down upon our retired bishops, Bishop Abdullah and Bishop Bess, who have served you faithfully in service of the Anglican Diocese, the helpful spirit of your grace. We also bring to you, your servants, the Archdeacon of so for South, the Venerable Edwin Primrose, all other members of clergy, lay evangelists, lay ministers, and altar servers, that as they serve you with a diligent and true heart on your altar, that they may always be worthy of your presence. We ask that you grow these members of the church spiritually and open their eyes to do what pleases you. Grant that your word may be truly preached and truly heard, your sacraments faithfully administered and received. Come to us, Lord, as you have promised to hear the prayers of those who ask in your son's name. Hear our prayers for St. Mary's Church in Pembroke, Tobago, and all its members. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant them all, the, all things necessary for their life, and bring them to be of one heart and mind within your holy church. Guide their spiritual advisors, Father, Ch Fa Father Ch Shaquille Charles, Father Hakim Marx, and Reverend Denise Hercules, to choose what is faithful to your purpose and plans. Guide them along the path of grace so that their decisions will delight you, direct their way towards the attainment of salvation, and deliver them from all evil. Loving God, bless the work of the Diocesan Mothers' Union. As they seek to share your love to all those in need, may you give them the strength, encouragement, wisdom, direction, and all other necessary tools to fulfill their mission in the world. Guide them, Lord, in all their doings, and further them with your continual help, that in all their works begun, continued, and ended in you, they may glorify your holy name. We ask all these things to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. There is a Anointing in the sanctuary, there is a stillness in the atmosphere. 
anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Come and lay down the burdens you of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. A prayer for youth and the unemployed. Father God, we come today thanking you for life, health, and strength. Father, you know the challenges that we face in everyday life, but we give glory, honor, and praise through it all. We pray a special prayer for our youths and those that are unemployed. We are forever reaching out for that special touch and anointing over them. Because without your blessing, without your favor, we are nothing. Continue to uplift them and carry them throughout all of life's challenges as they navigate their way through everyday life. And Father, we continue to pray for peace amongst the youths and the unemployed, and we ask that you continue to give them renewed faith, hope, love, and trust in you, and always make you God our Father, the center of our lives. For there is no purpose without you, and we know that once we know you and we love you, we could forever be renewed, for God will never forsake us. He will always cover us with his precious blood, and through your goodness, Lord, through your mercy, every unanswered prayer that we have, through our faithful witness to us being faithful servants, O oh God, we will be sanctified, we will be blessed. And God, you will take us through this life that is not always easy. Through your goodness, Lord, through your mercies, these are the prayers of our hearts, your humble servants, to Christ our Lord. Amen. Good night, everyone. Heavenly Father, as I come before you, Lord, I ask you for your strength, your mercies, and all the goodness that you have imparted upon me and in the lives of everybody who is in the shot of my ear, dear Lord. I pray for the presence of Christ in our churches, the growth of our church. Father, Lord, as I bring the members of the Diocesan Council, South Regional Council, the work of the parishes in the South region and all other parishes, the regions of Tobago, Northeast, and Northwest. Heavenly Father, as I bring each and every region, I bring the country of Trinidad and Tobago and all its churches, dear Lord. I ask you to continue to guard, guard, and direct each and every one of us in the way in which you think we should go, dear God. Guide us in the best way you see fit, dear Lord, as a church, dear Lord. Help us to work together for the betterment of our country and community, dear Jesus. Lord Father, I ask you to step in in each and every church, dear Lord. Lord Father, touch each and every member, dear God, be it the different personalities may come by, difference of opinions, dear Jesus. But I ask you to first to come together as one for the greater good of our church. Help us to be humble and let humility reign in each and every one of our churches, dear Lord, so that growth could be better for us, dear Jesus. Help us to come down to earth, dear Lord, and invite anyone from every walks of life, dear Jesus. Help us to open up our doors, dear God, and invite youth, dear Jesus. Help us to, you know, welcome them with open arms, no matter what walks of life they come from, dear Lord. Lord, Father, I ask you to touch the youth of, in, of our nation in a special, special way, dear Jesus. Lord, Father, lay your hands upon them in our church and by a larger community, dear Jesus. Help us to reach out to them, dear God, because without them we don't have a future, dear Jesus. Help our churches to be open and willing to assist in what 
whatever area it is, dear Jesus. Help us, dear God, to guard, guard, and direct them, dear Lord. Help us to be there to guide them, dear Jesus. Guide and not control, but give them guidance so that they will not turn away from us, dear Jesus. Oh, help us to open our hearts and our minds, dear God, as elders in our churches and welcome these youths, dear Lord. I ask you to touch them, dear God. Touch them and lay a special anointing upon them, dear Jesus. Father, I want to thank you for your, for your mercies endured forever. For, you know, in season and out of season, you have been guiding us. You have been protecting us. And for your words, your words of wisdom and encouragement that you have been placed on our each and every one of us, spirit, dear Jesus. For your greater good, for the source of help that you have given us, dear Jesus. For your great miracles, for the hurting world that we live in today, dear Jesus. For the comfort of the Holy Spirit that you bring for us to cover each and every one of us. Every one of us, for the grace and healing to those who have been broken through our own struggles and pain help us to be your vessels to offer comfort and strength to others who are hurting heavenly father i thank you dear god for your ways your thoughts are greater than ours you had a plan to redeem and make all things new your face is towards the righteous you hear our prayer and know our hearts you reign supreme we are more than conquerors through your gift of Jesus Christ. You are holy and just. Help us not to follow after the voice of the crowds, but to press in close to you, to hear your whispers and to seek after you alone. We will declare that love stands firm forever, for your loving kindness endures forevermore. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, for your son, Jesus Christ. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us from our sins, dear God. We ask you, dear God, to be with us this day, Lord Jesus. And Father God, we bring marriages before you, dear Lord. We ask you, Lord, to guide your people, to, cho to choose right partners, guide your people to, to be, that they will be evenly yoked in the eyes of your Holy Spirit. And we bring them under the Holy Spirit. And we bring them under your dominion. That husbands and wives will live faithfully together. Your Holy Spirit will guide marriages today in every family, Lord, according to their marriage vows. And we call forth the spirit of understanding that husbands and wives will be kind to one another. To bear one another's burden that husbands will love their wives as Christ loved the church, that husbands will take their rightful place to be the head of the home as Christ is the head of the church. You said in your word, Lord, that what you have joined together, let no one separate. Cover every family represented here today, Lord, in this place. We ask to restore broken marriages as we lift them up to you, remind them, O oh Lord, of their sacred covenant. Live life that is pleasing to you, Lord Jesus. They will place at the center, that they will place you at the center of their marriage, at their homes. Grant them patience and wisdom that their homes will be a place of prayer. Your word says a family that pray together, stay together. 
Fill them, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Touch their hearts and bring them together closer and closer to you, Lord Jesus. As you cover them with your precious blood. Lord, we pray for peace in our homes, in our families, in our nation, Lord Jesus. We pray you will bring all persons under the banner of your peace. That you will remove our stony heart and give us hearts to love. Protect families from violence and child abuse. Blind the eyes of the criminals and those who seem to be become victims. Bring justice and that justice will be served. We pray, Lord, for unity of all families. Grant us peace and love that binds us together. Lord, we pray all these things in no other name, but in the name of your Holy Spirit. Father, we, we thank you for all that you have, you have done, what you are doing, and what you continue, continue, to, continue to do in the lives of families, in marriage, and in homes. We thank you and we praise you, dear God. Lord, we give you the honor and all the glory that you deserve. We lift you high above all, and we thank you for your mercies, and we thank you for your grace. We love you, Lord, and we give you the honor. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, and we praise you for all, everything, dear God, that you have been doing. We bless your holy name in no other name but in Jesus' precious name. By we thank you, Amen. 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 Almighty and Heavenly Father, we come before your throne, dear God, to give you thanks, praise, and honor. Dear God, we pray for peace within our nation. We pray for that love and that kindness that we can share with our youth. Allow their hearts to grow in your love, dear Father. Allow them to understand you in a better and a humble way, dear God. Dear Father, those who are trying to carry our youths astray, those who are trying to instill within them some evil thoughts or some wicked mind, dear God. We rebuke them in the name of Jesus, dear God. We rebuke the gangs that are trying to reach out and touch the minds and hearts of our young people, dear God. We remove them from their thoughts, dear God. We try to make sure that we are instilling within our youths, dear God, to seek you each and every day, dear Father. We ask that you shall look upon us, dear God, and we ask that no evil shall come before them, dear God. We place our young people at the foot of your throne, dear God. We place them there and we ask them, dear God, that they shall be seeking you each and every day. That at each morning and each afternoon, dear God, they sing praises on your lips, dear God, towards you, dear Father. We thank you each and every day, dear Father. We pray for peace within our nation, dear God. Our neighbors that are struggling in their different situations, dear Father. In Venezuela, dear God, that we ask that we shall reign over them, dear Father. Remove that evil that is trying to, in, to corrupt that nation, dear God. We even pray for our Caribbean countries, dear Father, for Haiti, dear Father. Allow them to be able to find that love, dear God. Let not the evil one who tries to touch their land that knows that you are God in any place, dear Father, that, we shall, that they shall be removed, dear God. We pray even all the way across in Israel, dear God, that there shall be peace and love, dear Father. Let them understand that this place is yours, dear God, and only through you that they shall be able to understand that love, dear God. Even in Europe, their Father, we ask that they shall continue to find an understanding, their Father, to rest down the guns and to rest down the violence and to open their hearts and mind to you, their God. Their Father, we thank thee for all that you have continued to do with us, their Jesus. Let us continue to profess and to say unto you, their God, that you are the King, you are Lord, their God, and that you shall reign supreme. From this day, now and forevermore. Through your precious name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I 
I know we would have prayed in one of the prayers for Archdeacon Primus. I'm not too sure how many of you know that he's not at optimal health at this time, and we would like to pray for him. The Bible says, if anyone among you is sick, he should call for prayer, and we are here at this time to pray. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace, asking that you will reach out your hands and touch our dear Archdeacon. Reach out and touch him from the crown of his head to the very sole of his feet. Amen. Lord, you know what he needs at this time. You know his need even before he asks it, O oh God. Lord, as we place him before you, O oh God, we pray that you will remove what needs to be removed in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that you will restore what needs to be restored in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because your word says, by your stripes, O oh God, by your stripes, O oh God, we are healed. Not we will be healed, but we are healed. And we thank you for that promise, O oh God. Oh, yes, we thank you that when we call upon you in the day of trouble, you will answer us. Oh, yes, and you will do great and marvelous things before us, O oh God. We ask that you will deliver our dear brother. Back to us, oh God. Deliver him from the hands of the enemy, O oh God. Yes, Lord. That he will be restored to good health, O oh God. Yes, Lord. That he will continue to preach your word and to teach your people. To bring them to a closer understanding of your love for us. Amen. Your journey here to earth to die, to save us, to reconcile us to you and your Father. We pray that you will bless and inspire those who are taking care of him at this time. Anoint them with that holy anointing that they will see and discern what needs to be done with him, O oh God. Bless every instrument, apparatus. Every equipment that has to be used on him, O oh God, to restore him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let there be a blood hedge around his bed, O oh God. And set his guardian angels to encamp around him. And give him peace, peace of mind. To know that you are with him. You promise in your word that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And we hold you to that word, O oh God. We know that your promises are yea and amen. And we thank you that you are God and not man. Be merciful to him, O oh God. Be merciful to him and bless him. Be merciful to him and restore him. These and all other mercies we ask through Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer. Amen. amen. And we sum up our prayers in the words of the Lord's Prayer as we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. At this time, we will have the offering, and we sing, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Is God good? All the time. Is God good? All the time. And even though the evil seem to be winning, no. there's no victory there. Let him feel he's winning, but we know who is in control. Amen? Amen. Amen. For our God who lives on high For he guides us every day And he watches through the night 
Let us praise him as we sing together, holy God of life. Sing glory to the Father. Sing glory to the Son. Glory, glory. Glory, glory, everyone. Glory on the earth, he made it. Glory up above. Glory, glory, everybody. He has seen the Father's love. Your works, O Lord, has made us glad. For a Father have we shout to you in joy. Oh, how great are the deeds you have worked upon the land. But the foolish man will never see them, he can understand. Sing glory to the Father. Sing glory to the Son. Glory, glory. Glory to the Spirit. Glory, glory, everyone. Glory on the earth, he made it. Glory on the bomb. Glory, glory, everybody. We have seen the Father's love. Give thanks, give thanks to the Lord, for it is for our God who reigns on high. For oh, He guides us every day and He watches through the night. Let us praise Him as we sing together, Holy God of life. Sing glory to the Father. Sing glory to the Son. Glory, glory. Glory to the Spirit. Glory, glory, everyone. Glory on the earth He made it. Glory up above. Glory, glory. And uh, I feel it's just the rain cause some people to stay away. 
Yesterday we had 150. The numbers dropped today. We had about 70 something yesterday online. We had first someone from Canada, Toko, Aruka. And today I show we have people from probably Jamaica, North Carolina, Father. All right? It, it's, it's expanding, it's growing. We have 111 persons viewing right now. And we thank you for joining us. Even though you're not here, you still are able to hear the word of God. And again, as our dear sister would have reminded us, thanks to the young people. We know about streaming now, eh? And those of us who were a little older, we learn how to log on. Amen? And we know the convenience of streaming now. So we thank God for the opportunity. In the midst of bad, they came good. All right? Our sick and those homebound persons now have an opportunity to still participate in service virtually. So out of COVID, we have gotten some blessings, and we thank God. All right? So tomorrow, if rain falls, still come. If rain falls, still, because the word of God will be preached again. There's the opportunity for the laying of hands, prayers, etc. That will happen tomorrow. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, Unfortunately, we don't have with us Zoom that could take more than a thousand persons so that we could have individual prayer sessions for those online. But those who are online can probably send in their names and their prayer requests and we will try to have a clergy person assigned to pray on your behalf. All right? But I think the, the, the main thing is being here to receive that prayer and blessing. All right? So we want to invite you to bring a friend, bring a neighbor, bring a cousin, bring your tante, bring your nene, your compere, to come out tomorrow. And the children, remember this is all about youth, the young adults, etc., to be here to fellowship with us. So this evening, we wish to thank our dear sister for bringing the word. We got a lot of guidance and references of how we are supposed to treat with our young people, how we are supposed to encourage them to come to know God, giving them their space, but still being the guide or the side. Amen? So, we want to thank Sister Hermes Duncan, and we pray that God will continue to bless her in her ministry. We want to thank our music team. In absentia, we had uh, Sister Michelle Dorridge, who came and had to go and do another business. But she came and she gave of her talents and her time in the worship of God. So we thank her for being here. We want to thank as well Mr. Redhead for streaming, Mr. Braffitt for the sound engineer, And last night, I forgot to mention if we had anybody from out of the region of, San, of, of South. And we did indeed have someone from Belmont here with us, Northwest. So big up to Belmont. Even though you weren't here, it, even though you weren't mentioned yesterday, we thank Northwest for representing. Do we have anybody from out of the region of South? I guess. Okay, what region?
Good Shepherd to Napuna. Our Venerable Ashdikan Kenley Baldeo has he sent his representative, I guess, his ambassador. <laughs> All right, so we hope to see others here joining us tomorrow. Tomorrow we have as preacher, teacher, our very own southerner, boy from St. Stephen's Parish, now down in Separia. My, my godson father, Aaron Charles, who, huh? <laughs> Let us not go there tonight. That is for not for tonight, as is for another time. Yes, so we have Reverend Aaron Charles who will sum up the mission, the three nights of mission, and I know he's the chair of the mission committee. So those of you who were here for St. Clement's mission last August know he came with fire. And I am sure he's coming tomorrow with some more fire Amen. to put action under our feet and in our hearts so that we transform our church to what God is calling us to do. Amen? Amen? So I want to thank all members of clergy who are here with us to support the work and mission of God. And I just want to say to you, I hope to see you back here tomorrow. Some of you online, I hope to see you in person and I pray that you get home safely. All right? So we'll have now our final hymn or closing hymn. And we should know this one. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. And they'll know that we are Christians, Christians by our so the children who are coming will know that we are Christians by our love. The love we show to them. Amen? So let's stand and sing this song, reminding us as, a, as we welcome these children, they will learn from us how to love one to another.
Jesus, Son, Christ Jesus, his only Son, Christ Jesus, and all praise to the Spirit who makes us one. To the Spirit who makes us one, and will do. invite you to remain standing for the final blessing and I ask Reverend Father Michael Lawrence to do the blessing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray dear Lord we give you thanks and praise as we come to the end of this mission service for tonight. Lord, we pray traveling mercies on all those who are here. Pray that your continued blessing will be upon each and every one of us. That we return to our home safely and come out tomorrow to give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory on our final day of mission. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us you. bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our brothers and sisters, go in peace and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. You have a wonderful evening, everyone. Reach home Thank safe you. and see you tomorrow for our last day. Thank you and get home safely. Refreshment will be served at this time. You just remain where you are.